The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Warner here with realagriculture.com bringing you another episode of our canola school joined by Ken Wall he is the uh, grow team advisor for Federative Cooperatives Limited how's it going today Ken great awesome thanks for joining us here now we are talking about salinity for this canola school episode first and foremost we'll hear guys you know point out a patch in their field uh, that say that's an alkaline patch if you want to kind of describe or go through the difference of an alkaline patch versus a saline patch and kind of what we're looking at there. All right, so, so typically, in the, at least in the southwest or the southern part of the province, when farmers or producers talk about an alkaline patch, they're usually talking about salinity. Um, and, and they're not completely wrong because in most saline areas, um, you do typically have a higher pH, so so the pH can sometimes run up to the, you know high sevens or maybe 8.5, and and so from that perspective they're really not wrong. But the 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 biggest issue in these areas uh, is salt accumulation, you know, from excess water, and and uh, so we're talking about excess salts in in these areas. A true alkali um, area is is an area that's you know got um, elevated levels of, of pH and, and not necessarily um, the high levels of salts. All right, Ken, so when we're talking strictly about salinity and our canola crops, um, how can we manage it or how is that going to affect our, uh, our yields? Okay, so salinity, um, the problem is basically excess salts um, that are in solution in the soil root zone. Um, salinity is really a water issue and when producers ask me what do I do with my, my salt area or my salinity area on my, on my field, um, I typically tell them that we need to manage the water to control or maybe even mitigate uh, you know, some of the salt effects. Um, the, the first thing that uh, we, we usually try to do is to grow salt tolerant crops. And as it happens, canola is one of the more salt tolerant crops that, uh, uh, more salt tolerant annual crops, let me, let me rephrase that, one of the more salt tolerant annual crops that producers grow or that can be grown. Uh, so canola coupled together with barley are, are probably the two most tolerant crops. The problem with growing canola in some of these saline areas is we, we seed it really shallow and in the really top half inch is where most of the salt accumulation occurs and that's where a lot of the, the stuff happens in terms of salinity. So um, from that standpoint, canola sometimes has a tougher time germinating and getting going and because of the high cost of the seed that sometimes deters producers from doing that. However, if you can seed a, a canola uh, crop in say a slightly to moderately saline area and you get a couple of showers right after seeding, uh, which will flush those salts down a little bit and allow the canola to germinate. Once it's germinated, it actually does quite well and it can tolerate pretty, pretty high levels of salinity, at, at least up until the moderate level or a conductivity of about uh, four decisiemens per meter or millisiemens per centimeter. If, this is just off the top of my head here for you, Ken, if we have um, a bunch of rain before seeding, if it's wetter conditions going into the seeding season, is that going to change? It will, it will. If we get to get some moisture before and that, that'll flush some of those salts down, it actually, you know, and gives any crop a better chance of germinating and, and uh, emerging in these saline conditions. And then once they've emerged, then it comes down to how tolerant this crop is. Can it handle these elevated levels of salinity? Is there anything else we can put with the seed to buffer that salinity? Not really. Okay. Um, uh, there's, and there really is no amendments that you can actually add to the soil to mitigate the effects of the salts. It, it's pure soil chemistry. Um, and, you know, the, it is what the, it is. the plant has yeah. to, yeah. So, so the best way is to, if you can manage the water, uh, either stop the water from coming into these discharge areas, or, or sorry, recharge areas. So, so basically you get water moving from an upslope area um, water moves downhill, um, and especially after a year of, of, of excess moisture, say for example 2016, we had a lot of these lower areas, the water table uh, came up, 
and as the water table comes up, now you've got saturated conditions between the water table and the surface of the soil. As the water evaporates, it, it keeps pulling water and, and salts up. Water uh, evaporates into the air and leaves the salts at the surface. So that's really what causes salinity and uh, managing the water is, is a long way. So, so if, you, if you know where the water is coming from, maybe growing in a, a strip of alfalfa to intercept a lot of that water and control the water and that's what will help you with your salinity management. Now outside of canola and you said barley earlier as well are pretty uh, tolerant towards uh, salinity type conditions. If it's just a few patches in a field, are producers able to uh, put that to hay or to forage or to something else to mitigate the spread of that salinity patch? So as, 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 as long as your salinity levels are say under that four deci Siemens per meter or in that moderate range, you do have options of growing barley or, or canola. However, um, you need to figure out where that water is coming from because, uh, you know, if you're just growing a smaller crop and whatever, um, sooner or later it's going to get worse. So. Um, forages are a great uh, option. Um, for, for one thing, they do probably use another 50% or more water that an annual crop will. Um, basically, they start earlier and they'll grow right up until fall. Uh, root systems are more intense, they're, you know, they're better able to extract the water and even the nutrients because some of these areas are really high in nutrients because producers have gone over them for many years and you know, added nutrients and never really produced much of a crop. So the, so the nutrients are there. Uh, forages typically are much more tolerant to salinity than, than annual crops and even than barley and canola. And, and I always tell guys, so everybody wants to grow alfalfa, and I tell guys uh, if, if you can't grow barley or canola in these areas, you're probably not going to have much success with alfalfa. So then you need to look at other grasses, especially if the conductivity is you're getting into the you know, high end of moderate to the severe saline areas. Um, you're just wasting your, your money by trying to grow annual crops there. Would one year of switching over to a forage or a grass be sufficient or I guess it would be dependent on how... So typically if, if these forages are slowly reducing the water table and slowly, you know, improving the, the site, um, typically five or six years you want to leave that forage in to really have a difference. And then breaking it up, you know, maybe if, if your forage species are, you know, becomes unproductive or whatever, uh, break it up and grow annuals for a year or two. But unless you find a way to mitigate the water and manage that water, it's going to come back to um, more saline conditions. So uh, typically forages are probably the best option, especially if you've got, you know, high salt levels within these slight to moderate saline areas. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for all the info today, Ken. All right. Thank you.